Hey everybody, it's Check the Effects coming at you with another Minecraft tutorial, and today we're continuing on with the Smart Rail series. Last time we were talking about regions and basically how we can group our stations together into regions in order to simplify the binary brain at each and every single Smart Rail switching mechanism. In today's tutorial, we're going to be going over Smart Rail stations. Yes, finally we're going over the stations themselves. Now, here's the thing. The advanced version of the Smart Rail Station, the one that's completely automated, that does absolutely everything that I can think of, is turning out to be very, very big. Very, very complicated if you're looking at it as a whole. Now I am simplifying this thing into individual pieces. This thing is going to take several episodes to cover. So that said, given the fact that it's very resource intense, very redstone intense, very rail intense, and it's able to cover any situation where you have any player who is AFK can basically just come into the station, get into a locker, and basically, okay, from there they're done, and they, you know they can just sit there, and then when they get back, okay, they can grab their stuff, and their stuff is safe. You know, this is the type of thing that you want on a multiplayer server that has people that you don't know like it's open to the public and any Joe Schmo or Jane Smith can come on and basically use this thing without having to know much about it you just have to know the name of the station that you're going to and this thing will send you to that station or it will receive you uh, from whatever station you're coming from but it's also very resource intensive so in order to come up with something that is for someone who is on a smaller scale map I came up with this now on the outside it doesn't look like much because it's basically covered up but if I were to go inside you could see that we have a little station here and it's very very simple this is the simplified version of the smart rail station it's far less resource intense and it's intended for people who are working on a or playing on a single player map, a whitelisted server, or their own personal realm, which is not open to the public. In other words, only you and your close friends would be playing on a server that would use something like this. The reason is because if a Joe Schmo comes along and tries using this thing and they don't know how this works, they are going to end up at the wrong place or even possibly get stuck at the individual switching stations if they put in the wrong ticket. So that's why we gotta make sure that they know what they're doing when it comes to this thing. We also have here little regions and stations listed. So if you happen to forget, you can always tell which station is in what region. The arrivals area is also very simple. Basically you come in over from a entrance here that goes into a ramp. It would then sit you up on here where your minecart train, uh, all the carts would get drained and basically we would be there with a red light and then the moment that the train is empty with just you in it, you'll have a green light, be sent down the track, be bumped out of the train once you hit the activator rail and then your train goes off into this area here which would then have it turned into items and into the chest that you have over here at the departures area so over here you'd have your mine carts here as well as your chests and you'd have to take the individual mine carts as well as your chests use your crafting table to put together your mine carts with the chests in them so you'd have three of those and one regular mine cart then come up here and then assemble your mine cart train push the button and then away you go. On your way down eventually what's going to happen is that the tickets for this particular station including the region for this uh, station are going to be automatically loaded onto the train as well so that you have both your destination and your point of origin loaded in the train and that allows the next station to reload with the tickets for this particular station. So for instance let's say we're going to I don't know we're going to go to station one in region one we load up our train and go it's also going to have tickets for station four region three so that when you get to your destination station those tickets get reloaded into the chest over here for 
Station 1, Region 1. Now you don't have to really worry about the switching mechanism being affected in this particular case where we just have these two like this. The reason being is that you don't have any switching mechanisms that would have this and this together on the way towards any other station. It would have it on the way here but not on the way out. That's basically how you're supposed to uh, design your switching mechanisms when you're doing the overall design of the large scale, basically the overall big rail that's out there. So now you're probably wondering how on earth do you build this thing. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. So for this tutorial, you're going to need everything here in this inventory of mine and a little bit more as well. So you are going to need your basic building blocks, actually two of them. So I'm choosing polished andesite. I'm actually going to switch up to granite in the actual build portion. But for that demo, I'm having polished andesite. Uh, I may also use a second. You can use whatever you want. Uh, I'm also using another one, which will probably be diorite as well, or polished diorite, or, you know, just to be able to tell, okay, this is part of the machinery, and this is just regular walling and flooring and stuff like that. I'm also going to be using a button, some redstone torches, redstone repeaters, redstone comparators, redstone dust, of course, a few chests, some hoppers, droppers, some observers, some power rail, some regular rail, one activator rail, about four item frames, some oak fence, one green stained glass, one white stained glass, one red stained glass, some half slabs, you're also going to need one block of sand, one cactus, an anvil, one iron door, some ladders, two redstone lamps, a couple of ender chests, one minecart, three minecarts with chests in them, some furnaces, and you're also going to need your tickets that we had from before, or whatever tickets you're going to be using for your system. You're also going to need your region tickets, like we, as we discussed in the previous tutorial. You have your region tickets for region 1, region 2, and of course your station tickets as well. You're also going to need some filler blocks. Remember that you're going to create these by renaming them using the anvil. Uh, other things you're going to need are signs as well as the second block that we have uh, mentioned before. So we start off with a 50 by 50 area and we're going to go ahead and build ourselves a ramp. So I'm going to go ahead and build a ramp about seven or eight high and I'll come back once that's done. So here we have our ramp going up like this. So it's just one part going up. We're going to put our redstone, our hard rail like this. Next, we're going to take a redstone torch and put that right under here. Now what we're going to do is take another block, put that here. And we're just going to bring this down like so, just so that we have an idea as where this is going to go. So like that. And once you have that, you can take these out again. Okay. Now, we're going to take uh, some hoppers, and we can put the hoppers in like so. So we'll put, probably going to put it in here if you'd like. And we're going to put this like so, like this, at oh, basically a place where we can put our hoppers in. Once those are placed, we can take these blocks out. Okay, I'm going to just put this back here. And now what I'm going to do is put my chest on top of this, just like that. Next we're going to put is a hopper on top of this, right? And another hopper on top of the chest as well. Then we're going to put another hopper like this. And then you're going to make a ramp of hoppers going up like that. Next thing you do is have your, make sure you take this one out and make sure you place a regular rail on top of this like that. And we're going to put power rail all the way down these hoppers like so down to that point like that next what we're going to do is take a tower of blocks put them like this break this one out break this one out and break this one out then we're going to put a redstone torch here here and here so you should have a situation where your power rails are turned on to reverse this what we're going to do is put a Redstone torch on a block, so we have an inverter over here 
we're going to have two redstone dust and a repeater feeding into that. That ends up reversing the signal, so now it's turned off. Now what we're going to do is we put some blocks like this, and we're going to take our repeaters, sorry, our comparators, and put them like this. Now, if we were to take the comparators and test the chest, right, I just want to show something. So let's go ahead and put an item in here. Uh, I don't know, let's put some gold ore. Okay, now the gold ore, of course, is going to be siphoning through this, but look at this, the comparators are not turning on. You see, it's going through, but they don't turn on. Most likely because the signal is so quick that the comparators don't pick up on it. And they end up going through the system without ever detecting your items are going through. To remedy this, we have to put this on top like this. And then we're going to put our comparators like so. Now, if I put my items in through the system, you at least have one of them that turns on. That's exactly what you want. In which case, we're going to boost the signal in here and here. Next, we're going to take two more blocks and put them here and tie this wire together like this. Okay. We also want to make sure we get ourselves a monostable circuit. And But before I put the monostable circuit, I'm just going to put a repeater here, have two redstone dust like this, and I'm going to build myself a pulse extender. So I'm going to put eight comparators in a loop. So four comparators in a loop and then tie them together like this. We're also going to put a monostable circuit now. That's going to feed into this. So we'll put a redstone dust, sorry, redstone repeater down like this. Redstone dust like so. And we're going to take a full signal. Well, actually, we don't need to put that like that. But uh, yeah, we'll put, it, we'll put this out like so. There we go. And uh, oh, one thing I actually want to do is boost the signals a little bit. So let's go ahead and put the comparator here, repeater here, and then repeater over here. And then we'll do it with this. Oops. Like that. Okay. And I'm going to put this at basically full ticks. So there's full four ticks. Uh, now, if I want to, I can also put a little bit of delay on there here and some delay on here just to make it sure, make sure that all the items end up going through here, which should be the case by the time that it gets down to here. Okay. Um, oh, actually, one thing I forgot to mention. This should be reversed. So we should have a reverse signal here. So that should be like this. Okay. So what happens here is now we end up with this getting items coming through here. This gets powered. This gets turned off. Now, when this is turned off, that's when this stuff is going through. When the power is off on here, this is going to turn on again, and it's going to pulse with a pulse extender, and then it's going to have this turn on. So let's just demonstrate that quickly. So we're going to take our items. So that turns off. At the moment that all the items get through, there we have our signal, which keeps this turned on for a while long enough for the minecart train to go on its merry way. The next part, we're going to extend this a little bit and then we're going to put a activator rail roughly around here. So there is good. So now we have the activator rail here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here and this here and all of that. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. You're going to have to have half slabs below every single point here where we have redstone dust. So I have to take this out again. Sorry about that, guys. Take that out. Take this like this. And we're going to put redstone dust on top of the half slabs. I'll show you a reason why later on in the tutorial as to why we're doing that. So then you'll understand why this needs to have half slabs. Okay. And then, of course, over here, same thing. Half slabs, wherever you have redstone wire or redstone dust. See? Oh, almost forgot one piece here. There we go. Now we get to build our little traffic light. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to build a wall around here. And along with that. And I'm just going to build up a wall like this. About mm, too thick. So there we have our wall. Now, 
to decide where I'm going to put my traffic light, I want to see exactly where I'm going to land as far as my train is concerned. So I'm going to put this here and I'm going to put a full train like this, but I'm not going to fill them with tickets. This is going to make sure that I don't get launched afterwards. So I'm going to put this like this up and over and now I'm right here. Okay, so this gives me a rough idea as to where I'll end up. Okay, if I want to go a little bit lower, I can. All I have to do is just take this out here and put myself a regular rail like this and then I'll end up going a little lower. Okay, so this is how you end up adjusting it. So then you just put your carts back on, hop in, and then put your lever. And now I'm a smidge lower now, see? So if I get off, you see, it's still enough that it's gonna have this cart drained by this hopper below it. So we're good. If by any chance it's not gonna get drained by that hopper, then you wanna make sure that you just take this back off like this and put this back on. So then you know for sure it's going to be drained by that hopper below. I suggest trying to keep the um, the all the, the full rail full ramp of of powered rails, so that way you end up having no issues with any hop the hoppers not picking up items. Okay. So again, hopping in like this and see where you land. Okay, so I'm going to land right around here. So I'm going to decide, I'm going to put my traffic light somewhere around here, okay? Because that's where I can see it. Okay, so I'm going to put my traffic light somewhere around this area. So let's go ahead and put a little notch in here. And take this out here like this. Take this out like this. There we go. Now, uh, let's see. we have got my my glass okay and I'm gonna put a green light basically green stained glass white stained glass and a red stained glass just like that okay so if I look here not that visible so let me just take a look here now still not that visible so this is not that great positioning so I'm gonna take this one up and I'm gonna put green here white here red here now let me take a look Okay, I can see that much better now. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off and I'm going to put my redstone lamps. So I'll take my redstone lamps and I'm going to put those in. One here, one here. And I'm going to put my regular building block, in this case my polished andesite. And I'm going to put that right there like this. Next I'm going to put one block here and one block here and I'm going to take a redstone torch and I'm going to put my redstone torch like this. Now by default, you'll see that the red light is turned on, right? We can cover this up like that, it's just to make it look nicer, right? And now what I want to do is I want to bring the signal from here up in there, but I want it to be so that only when this is powered, let's say with this one here, it receives power, that you'll end up with this one switching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some power out of here and I can bring it up into this point here. So we have a little thing like this and then what happens is you have a repeater coming out like that to pull the power out and then we're going to have redstone wire going up like this and into this one right here. Okay. Now. I take this out and go back here. Okay. Uh, in this, for this case, I'm just going to put cargo and nothing else, just for this test. Okay. So I'm going to take some cargo and put that in one minecart. Okay. And I'm going to hop in. And now, okay. Now if I look here, it's red light. Eventually light there we go and we end up getting buffed right off um, now in this case you want to try and make this a little bit less here because you want to make sure that you're 
task group gets hopped off and doesn't have any type of problems. Okay, so we can actually shorten this a bit. There we go. And we can also bring this up a bit, like so. And if we were just sitting here like this, if you can't see it, then you can just take this off and then you know make it higher if you want, like that, right? So you can see it, right? So typically it'd be in this point, if you want this, not there you go. Because if you'd have this block like that, you can't see your light, so you want to make sure it's clear enough that you can see it, okay? If you want, you can keep it like that or like this, up to you. Uh, if you want to, you can take your white stained glass if you want and add another stained glass on top of that, make it look nice. That's completely aesthetic, so it's up to you what you want to do with that top block right there. Uh, I would suggest just putting this in behind here. You can also put blocks like this, right? Because that doesn't matter about that side, but just as long as you see it from this side. So now I'm going to take this out by about five. So one, two, three, four, five, like so. And then bring a wall across like this. So that's going to be my wall here. Put another wall like this. Uh, that should be good enough, right? And now what I want to do is basically create a silo of chests. Okay, so we're going to create a silo of chests by actually put this back here, and we're just put chests like that, and then have them go up like this, like that. How tall you want it is completely up to you. Okay. In the back, we're going to have hoppers. So we're going to take, let me just take this out of the way. Okay, and we're going to put hoppers all the way up like that, or you know what, let's put it up on this side here, like that. Okay, so hoppers all the way up like that. Next, we're going to have to have a item elevator. So we're going to take some droppers, so here, and some observers, okay? And the dropper, first of all, we have to have it feed into this one. What we can do now is take a our second block, so I'm gonna take my polished diorite, that, and then I'm gonna skip underneath here. Uh, if I want to, I can actually put it down one more. Like that. And then I'm going to put droppers going up. Now you can use whatever form of item elevator you want, but this is the one that I'm choosing for this. Um, we could also put it back one just to be on the safe side. So let's take this out and let's go like this. Like that. I think you know, one more like that and put this like so and have another hopper going in like that there we go now we can close this up and then take this back create a platform under here once we have our little platform we're going to put our comparator like so okay and then we're going to put a block like this Redstone torch goes here, redstone dust goes over here. We want full signal coming in here. We're going to have a observer coming like this, and another observer like that. Redstone dust going like so, and then we're just going to have to feed up into this. So we're going to put a observer face pointing into this, hear that tick, and then another one into this one over here. So it's going to have to face down like that. And you keep on going all the way up like this until you hit the height of your dropper tower. The other observers, break this out of here, are going to feed from these ones. You can hear each dropper ticking as it goes up. Okay, and we're going to close this up. There we go. So now, 
if I put an item in here, so let's put a, uh, a hopper like this. Okay, so it's, and then let's put an item in here. So let me just show you. There is nothing in these chests here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put an item in. Uh, let's see, what should we put in? Uh, let's get something to put in here. Uh, well, you know, let's go ahead and put... Uh, we'll put the uh, cactus in. Yeah, or, or we'll put maybe half a stack of region tickets. So half a stack of region tickets. And you can see that it very, very quickly starts loading all your items in there until you get full half stack and full 32 items in your large chest here. There you go. Now besides this, we're go beside this, we're gonna get our ender chest. Okay, and I'm gonna just put this aside like that. And that's gonna go right beside this, right? You can put it here, you can put it here, completely up to you. I'm deciding to put it like here. It's completely just aesthetic, okay? I'm gonna take this out like that. And you're gonna build up your wall like so. And like that. Now, here I would suggest using a furnace. So you're gonna get a furnace. I think I didn't mention that before, but you're gonna need furnaces. Uh, so we're gonna take our chopper, put that aside, and we'll put a furnace right on top of this hopper. The purpose of this furnace is merely to reduce lag. So basically, now the furnace on top. The hoppers work on two ticks, one to pull and one to push. With the furnace on top, it's not going to pull because it's empty, so it's not going to be pulling from it, okay? So that's what it's going to do. It's going to help by reducing lag. So that's why you're going to have a furnace on top of any hopper that it does not have anything above it to pull from. We're not, putting, putting, we're not going to put the furnace over here because, well, we have a block on top of that, so it's just not going to look nice, okay? And we're going to close that up like that and then continuing building our little wall up like so next we can take a couple of rails and put them like that and then we're going to put hard rails all the way through like this now we can put a thing like this a little tunnel okay and we're going to put over here is a ramp with a redstone torch underneath and that's going to come up and over like that and that's going to go into this here next we're going to take a power rail place that there and build a ramp that's about 10 high so one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten then we're going to take a redstone torch and place somewhere around here Okay, then take your power rails and bring that all the way up like so. Now I'm going to take this one and come out like so and go down too. So we're going to take our power rail and like that, then have another one come out like so and have that go straight this way. Take another block, it'll go like this, and then we're going to take our sand block and let's go ahead and put this here and get our cactus to while we're at it and we're going to put sand block like this cactus like this and then another block on top so what this allows us to do is if we have our mine cart coming along like so we go up and over and get turned into an item like that now to make sure that the item gets caught we're going to use some hoppers so let's get ourselves a hopper and I'm just going to toss this cactus away because I don't need that anymore. I'm going to take this out like so and we're going to put a block goes like this and then our hoppers go all the way around facing into that for one particular hopper. And we can use some 
our rail. Only on shift to do that. That should give you enough room to catch your minecart. Now we're gonna take a block and just bring it out like so. So we have three blocks for here. Take those out and leave that one there. Then what we're gonna do is put in some hoppers like this, one, two, three, and take this one out like that. Below this, we're gonna put in an item sorter. So we'll put this out like this, bring it out like that. Take this out, put this on top, and then we're gonna have our item sorter or item filter that put this block a hopper into this block like this get ourselves a comparator and then we're going to make our standard item sorter like so and let me put this repeater here so comparator redstone dust redstone dust repeater and redstone torch just like that okay now we can take this out. So we have to basically take this out like so. Uh, looks like this is gonna end up coming around. Where is it? Around here. Okay. So we'll take this all out, and then we're going to put hoppers all the way up. Like so we have to put. Actually, we're gonna put some chests in here. So let's get our chests. Okay, and take that out. Chests are gonna go here and here. And we're going to put these all the way up, like so. Like that. Okay, and just one lower like that. Next we're going to put a block like that. So we have our, our basically our hoppers going like this. Uh, this is not right. Because this is going to be affecting this. So we don't want that. Take these out. This is two close. So take this out like this. And we're going to put this a little bit more this way. Because otherwise it's going to be too close to the rest on the torch. And you don't want that to happen. So we'll put like this. And put this in like so. Like that. Take that one out. And now we have a little bit of space, a single space between this hopper and the redstone torch. The problem is before we had it too close to this redstone torch, that would cause this hopper to lock up when this redstone torch was turned on and it'll only open up when an item went through. Which probably wouldn't be a very big problem, but uh, it would be better to have it this way. So I'll go ahead and put this like that. Um, now I'm going to take another set of chests and that should go like this. And I'm going to make my chest go all the way to the same level as the ones over there. Okay. And then you're going to take, uh, you know what? I want to, I can actually bring this over a smidge. So let's put these this way instead. Like that. And then I can bring this over a bit, save some space. Then we're going to take some hoppers, bring that out like this. And then we can put this down like this. Now this can point down over to the side, either way it's going to go right into here as a catch-all. Okay. So once we've got that set up, then we're going to have to put in the other hoppers in the back like so. Then we're going to take your item frames. There's an item frame here. Okay. One here and one here or doesn't really matter one either side. As long as you have one on each chest. And I'm gonna take my minecart and then my minecart with a chest in it and that's gonna indicate which one is which. Okay, actually not minecart with a chest this has to be uh, a chest, not a minecart with a chest in it. So put more your chest in here like that. There you go, that's better. Okay. Now for this filter, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and we're gonna put in some filler blocks. So let's try and get about 16 of them like this. And then just take another bunch and put five more. There we go. And we're gonna take some chests. So I'm gonna take about, uh, oops, uh, we just try and get that again. And we have one chest already in there. 
Uh, did we have any more in there? No, we don't. So I'm going to put one, two, three. So we have three chests in there, and that's all that we really need. So now the items when they come in, let's say your uh, your train comes in, all the mine carts will end up coming into here, and the mine carts with chests in them they'll be split into both mine carts and chests. So those mine carts will go into here again, and then you'd have your chests coming into here. So and then we also need to get ourselves a crafting table. That's something that I forgot to mention. So let's get ourselves a crafting table, okay? Because you're going to need a crafting table in order to put your stuff together. So crafting table can go right there. Now what we're going to do is just build a little wall up like this. Going right up like so. And we'll just, I'll just build this and come right back once I have this done. There we go. So we got our first wall set up. Now we're going to take some furnaces. We got to get our furnaces to try and decrease the lag on these hoppers. So I'm going to take one furnace, put one there, another furnace, put one there, and furnaces right along like that. Okay. You don't want to put any furnaces on here because these have to be open in order to catch your chests and your minecarts. Now we're just going to take this up by about six blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You can take it further out if you'd like, but I'm just going to put it at six. Next, we're going to build this all the way up, but the same level as this one here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six chests. So three, four, five, six double chests like that. And then another set at the same height over here. Okay. So now we're going to take our hoppers. And I can actually take this because I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm going to need that now. And then we put our hoppers in like so. So we're going to go all the way down the back of these like that. Next what we're going to do is we had to make our item filters. Now what we're filtering for this, if you remember this part, this is going to be for your tickets. So basically let's take our item frame here that there and we'll put another one over here it doesn't have to be like you can put it like this if you want to it's just whatever the case is it doesn't really that part doesn't matter that's aesthetics so I'll get myself an anvil and I don't think I'm going to be needing a item frame anymore and then what I'm going to do is get myself a name tag so we'll get some name tags just two of them exactly okay and uh, let's see here what do I not need right now at this moment? I don't need the anvil, so the anvil can go. And I'm going to take this and rename this as uh, City Tickets. And I'm going to name the other one as Region Tickets. So the other ones are provinces or states. So region. Okay, so you can rename it to whatever you like uh, that's relevant to your situation. So, but this is just to signify that these are for regions, and then the other one is for your individual stations or cities. So you can put for this one if you put province, states, prefectures, districts, counties, whatever. It doesn't really matter. I'm just putting regions just to keep it generic. So now what we have to do is make our item sorters so what we're going to do for here is take two out like so and then put another two out like that take this out like so like that and put it like this there we go and then we're going to bring this down this out and then this goes across with that on top with that on top and this on top and this on bottom here and then repeater take this out repeater and then we have comparator comparator oops, comparator redstone dust over here here and here and here and then your torches so you put your redstone torch here 
and here. Now we're going to build a battery of these on e one on either side. Okay, so just keep on building item sorters for as many regions as you think you're going to have or as many stations you think you're going to have. So I'm just going to keep on building this. These are cities and these are region tickets. Uh, it might be advisable to have the regions on that side and the cities on that side. So let's flip this around. So you have city tickets and region tickets. So I just flipped them around. The reason being is you have less space over here and a lot more potential space over here, right? Um, you know, you could extend it out this way if you want, but if this is going to be where your entrance is, well, you're a little bit limited in that sense. So, we're going to keep our regions on the right and the cities on the left, so that'll give us enough room to go out this way if we like. Okay, so now let's uh, go ahead and put the rest out. So, let's see, I have I'm going to put my regions here, so I'm going to put, let's say I have uh, four regions. And then what I'm going to do is put hoppers going across like this. Uh, and put some more hoppers in like that. There we go. So they all feed into here, and then these go into this. Okay. Um, now, let's do to this side. So I'm going to pretend I have, I don't know, um, eight of them. So one, so we have one, two, three, four, and eight. Okay, and now we're going to take our blocks, put them across. And put our hoppers right in. Those right across here, take these out, take our comparators, those guys across, redstone dust, all across here, redstone torches, so we'll actually first get, uh, yeah, let's get this across, or hoppers first, I'm gonna go right across here. And put one in this way, and then we have to do the others. A couple of bad ones there, and just check to see that everyone is pointing in to the correct hopper, so that all the hoppers are done correctly. And there we go. Then rest on torches that and there is your battery for this part here now we need a pipeline running across this so let's go ahead and do that so I'm going to take this up and over like that and I'm going to bring my pipeline right across whoops fell through something there we go that's going to go right across like that okay and I'm going to take this out. We're also going to put some furnaces right across the tops, like this. Right across the top of that. We also put some furnaces on top of here. Again, this is just to reduce lag. Like that. We're not going to put any over here because we're going to have our wall there. Now we're going to need an item elevator. So I've already gotten this part done. And it, all it is is we had something like this that was there. I came through a hole here. And it was just one, two, and then three. And then you take this two out, put that back, and then we fill in our hole on here. Close that. Okay. And we're going to put up an item elevator. So let's take a look here how close this is. So we want one single space about there. So actually right around here would be a better idea for that. So let's put this block over here. Then we're going to put a whole bunch of droppers going up. Maybe go a little higher, like that. And then this guy has to turn in this way. Then we get ourselves a hopper, and there we go. 
Now we can take another furnace if we want to. And put that furnace on top of this one here, like this. Or like this. Keep it consistent if you like. And then you have your observers. So let's put in the observers. Let's take this out. Okay, so then this is going to come like, let's see, and this one's going to go here. This is going to come up like so. Okay, and we're going to take this and this one out, and then just place them like that. This is like that. This one has to point in like that way. Okay, and up around. And we're going to have these keep going all the way up. About till we hit there. Then we're going to have one. Oops, this was wrong. Uh, take this out and then go like this. Okay. And I can close this up here. Okay. Take this out too so that we can get back there. And then continue on in the observers all the way up like that. Oops, and this is put wrong, and this is also wrong. This has to go here and here. So it's facing at this, looking at this block, and then updating the one behind it to the strawber. Okay. Now for a clock mechanism. So same thing like last time. We're gonna have a little clock mechanism. So to do that, first we have to make our platform. Um, I'm going to do it on this side here. Get ourselves a comparator, a block, a redstone torch. So redstone dust. And then we have an observer pointing this way, an observer pointing that way. And then we have this like that. Now, if I take off this redstone torch, for instance, or if I turn it off, that is. So now, if I put something in here, it should pop out of here. So I'll go ahead and do that. And there it came out from there. See? So let's put this back in so that it goes into this. And now we have to put in every single filter for this. So, just as usual, we're going to take our filler blocks and then bring them across at every single one. And you do this both for your regions and also your cities. So we have all four of our region sorters done. I'm going to do the same with the city filters. So city ones, we're just going to have station one, one, two, three, station two, one, two, three, and station three, one, two, three. We have eight of these. We have four regions here, and we have eight of these things. What happens if a situation Let's say we don't know if we have a, a, a third region yet, right? So we'll take that out, right? What do we do about this to make sure that we can use this physical filter in the future, but in the meantime, this should be an empty slot? Well, that's quite simple. All you do is put a single filler block right there, and now this is reserved for when you actually need it. So now we're going to take our grass block, and we're going to put that in each slot here, that doesn't have a ticket in it until we need it at a later time. Now, after we have this thing set up, we can do one of several things. We can either have the pipeline go down into here and then have it come up again with an item elevator on this side, or we can have it come just around here 
and go right to this spot over here because it's going to have to come up anyway at some point. So to do that, let's go ahead and put in our hopper pipe. I'll do that and be right back. So here's our hopper pipe and it's going all the way around here and I put furnaces on top just to make sure that the lag gets reduced. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to take around here and here two holes like that. I'm going to put a block here and another block here. Now from around here, we're going to take a hopper, put that in here and here. Then we can break off these two, like that. Now we're going to take these, break them up like, take them like this, and right below that we're going to have a set of item sorters. So a couple of item sorters are going to go into here. So let's go put our item sorter like that. So one's there, take that out, put this in, put a hopper pointing into this, like that. Then, comparator, this way, redstone dust, redstone dust, repeater, and redstone torch. Okay, then you're going to have, actually this should probably be a little further back, so we're going to move our hopper pipe a little back. I'll do that and be right back. Okay, so I've gotten my hopper pipe moved back over by one. So you should have two hoppers from this wall, okay? So the, I've also noticed that I put this wall in. I forgot to mention that. That's already been put in. And uh, essentially from where we put our chest, we have one coming out and the wall goes all the way across down here up to wherever point you want to go. And then it goes across one, two, so we have from here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 blocks across. And then from here is whatever length you need it to be. Okay. Over here, we're having hoppers go out by 2, and then there's a third hopper that points in that direction. And then it goes out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 hoppers, and the 15th hopper, the last one, points down, okay? Because what we're going to do is we're going to have it go up and across over to here underneath, underneath this thing. Now, if we wanted to, we could have it go up and across by having the hoppers lead back in this direction and then go over here and right into this. Uh, but that's, we're just, we're just going to go with have it in, having it go underneath in this particular case since we already built that, okay? So, uh, from here, we're going to put in another item sorter. So we have another item sorter that's going to go right around directly here. Okay, so let's build our item sorter like that. Put in the repeater over here, and then comparator, just like the last one. Redstone dust, redstone dust, and redstone torch. There we go. And we're going to have a Comparator put right in the sorry, a hopper pointing right in the back of the comparator right there. Okay. Now I'm gonna bring these all the way up like so. It's a little bit further until we get up to this level like that. And then have hoppers pointing into this one and then into there. So it goes like this. You need to make sure there's a space between this hopper and this redstone torch. So there should be a one block right here, one block space. Between these two. If you have it too close and it ends up being right up next to this, whenever this redstone torch is turned on, this hopper will end up being locked. So that's why you have to have this one space that's there, one block space. Okay, same thing with this side. So let's go ahead and put this up and oops, and put this underneath like that. There we go. And that's set. Now these are going to be for your local region. So uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to take out region 3 out of here. So take out region 3 and I'm going to put a filler block in there because I remember because we need to have a region for this particular station. So we have region 1, region 2 and this is going to be region 3. So we have station 1, station 2, station 3 and station four we don't want to use station four here we're going to take station four out okay and we're going to put a filler block in there because we're going to say that this is station four okay so we're going to have this as station four in region three 
So we're gonna put this one here as where is our region three? There's a region three. Put one, two, three like that, and then we put over here station four. One, two, three like that. Now we're going to have two take our filler block here and we're going to have to take 20 of those uh, we got a message someone calling me but now let's do this so we have 20 blocks here so let's drag them right across and we have five in each same one with this one over here sorry guys we got those messages in discord add two three four five so here like this and then right across like that there we go so now we have 20 in each and 20 in each so five in each sorry we have five in each slot here and five in each slot over here the next thing we want to do is take this hopper pipe and bring it down into here so if we're looking at this see how it lines up it's going to go right down in there we don't want it to go near that redstone dust we want to go into that hole over there so what we're going to do is we're going to put a little thing like this put two down because that's about the same level as that if we look here it's two down and then we're going to take a hopper and point that not to there but into this one over here we can break this and now we can build our hopper pipe going all the way up like so okay and now that's just going to go just below that uh, if you want we can actually take this out and then put it like this there we go and then we can just put another furnace on top of this like that there we go so now that goes boom down like that now we're going to go down underneath here and we're going to feed our hoppers into this one here so let's go ahead with this okay and uh, actually we want to go in this direction here okay uh let's see right over that one's not probably the best direction we want to go in go this way like this okay Hold up. No, actually, we had to go around the other way. My mistake. We had to go around this way. Because we want this. There's going to be some stuff coming out of here, and that's going to have to go over that side. So we don't want to block it. So it's going to come this side like this. And it's going to come down like so. There we go. And that's coming down and into there, right? And then we have this one, which has to go into this one over here. So we have... A hopper that should come out of here and then we're gonna have this coming out like that and into that like that now we can take some furnaces and put them right across like so and I guess some some items must have gotten through the system uh, for some reason anyways but anyways, those items will end up going into that chest anyways. So that goes all the way in there. Yep, same thing happened here. So I got some items that were in here. So we're knowing that this thing is actually working. Okay, gold ore. I wonder where that came from. Okay. I guess that must be from some previous test. But anyways. So we have that going in like that. Okay, so that's all done. Like that. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put this like so. So now that's set. I'm going all the way across. I'm just going to put this like that just to make it consistent. All the way around like this. And that's going to help reduce the lag from this very long hopper pipe or set of hopper pipes. Also on this side here, you're going to want to make sure you put some furnaces like this. Just to make sure that that's covered. And keep looking around to see if you see any open furnaces that have nothing above them and except for this area here where we want them to be like this all the others should be covered up so that you end up reducing the lag caused by the hoppers 
Now I've already created a little ramp like this, so you want to make sure you have that set so it's like one, two, three, four, five, six blocks high. And we're going to go ahead and thicken this up a bit. So we're going to put more blocks like this. Okay. And then we're going to get our rails. So let me just get rid of this extra here. You know, powered rail and our regular rails. And what we're going to do here is take this block out here, put this like so, and then take this out and put this block back. Okay, now we can put the rest of our powered rails all the way down like so. Okay, then we're going to put regular rails out like this. And then we're going to put some more powered rails along like so. Okay, now let's take a look at the outside here. Roughly around that one there. So roughly around here, we want to stick a redstone torch. Okay, right there. And a repeater right into that. Okay, but we can cover this up also. And what that does is allows us to power those power rails. That's going to give us a bit of a boost on the way out. So now we're going to take this and cover this up. And if we want, we can add another power rail or a regular rail. It doesn't matter at this point. But I'm going to put another power rail like that. And then just let it go all the way out. So this would lead to your exit. Okay. Now we need to make sure we have a way to power this. So first of all, uh, let's get the aesthetic portion done because we need to make that fit in as well. So we're going to put this like so. Now what I'm going to add here is a set of stairs. So let me just take these, uh, you know what, let me just take uh, yeah, put this like this. And like that, just thicken it up. And I'm going to put some fences as well later after I'm done with this. So I'm going to get my stairs. So I'm going to get some stone brick stairs. In my case, you can choose whatever stairs you like. I'm choosing stone brick. Okay. And then I'm just going to put up like this. So that's good enough. And then I'm going to have this go up like so. So it's a little safer, right? And then a little something like this. So that when you come on, then it's a little safer. Then. Uh, if you want to, you can also even do like this, right? And then add some stairs on here, right? And then uh, completely up to you how you want to design this part. But I'm just try and make it both practical and safe for people who are going to be using this, okay? Next thing I want to do is get some fences. I don't know if I have that already in my thing. Let me see here. Do I have fences here? Yes, I do have fences. So I'm going to take that and get my fences. Put some fences here. And I'm going to also put fences along this here. I'm going to cover this up. And this is to make sure that no one falls off. Simple as that. Nothing more, nothing less. Slightly decorative. Oops. Another stair here. Just to make it easier to get on. There you go. And you can go up and down fairly easy with this. Okay. Uh, I would strongly suggest putting also some blocks like this and fences across. So that it's, you know, people won't interfere with this. You could also stick this part in a tunnel or whatever you want. Uh, that you know, from here on, it really doesn't matter what you do with this as long as you have the rail to go out. Now we need to make sure that we have an area to put our button in. So we're going to get our minecart and our minecart with a chest in it. Okay. And typically, people will try and put the thing right around here or here. Uh, I'm going to try and see by putting it right here because some people just decide to put it at the very top. Okay. So then I'm going to take my button. Uh, get a button here, and I'm put this one back. I'm gonna take a button. I'm gonna get in here, and I'm gonna see how far I can stretch my arm out. So let's see, did I go? Okay, there's a button there. It's not visible though, so I'm not gonna use that. Uh, I'm gonna stick it right there. Let's see, can I hit the button? Yes, I can hit the button. Okay, so that's perfect for that. 
okay? So that's the furthest start you can go, so people can put it anywhere along this track, okay? So from there, it's reachable from that point, as well as if it's down here even, it will reachable, you just have to turn back, right? So now we're gonna make this button power this rail, okay? If it's like here, that's obvious, it'll power the rail. We have it at this position here. The reason we don't have it here is because then it's covered up by the minecarts. So we're gonna put a hole in here so that we know where the button is. And then we're gonna take this out like this. Now this rail is about six long, I think. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven long. So it's seven powered rails long. So we wanna have just enough time for this train to come out. So let's take a look and do a quick little test. If I were to just take this here and feed it in, so do like this, and I'm going to put another block here and put another block here and just feed a straight current in like this. Oops, not like that. Let's put a repeat, get a repeater. Put that in here. Okay, and that should be going. No, that's too high. So we're gonna put one more down. So like that. And this way we can put straight down like that. Now if this goes uh and it's long enough, that means that we should be able to get all four trains off this. Otherwise we'll have to make a small alteration. So let's go push the button. Uh, and it's not moving. That's probably because it's still not low enough. So we gotta make it lower. So let's see where this is. Yes, it's definitely not low enough. So we have to put that a little bit lower. So we're going to take this up like that. Or we could actually even go like this and then like that. There we go. Now we'll take this and put it on like that, okay? Now we fill this up again. Now if I hop in, I push the button, go, there you go. So it's just long enough for us to get this train off this track. So that's perfect, okay? So we don't need to do anything more. We don't need any pulse extender or anything of that sort. If you want to stick a pulse extender just to be on the safe side, completely up to you. But if, for instance, if you come across a situation where this button is not having a long enough pulse, in that case, you want to make sure you use a pulse extender. And if you run into that situation, all you got to do is to take the current out of here. So let me put a thing like this. And then we can take this off and then put a one like that, or we could put, actually put it down like this way if you want to. Put it like so. And we can do is put a one like this, one like this, add this in like that, and then put two blocks like this. That should extend your current. So let's go ahead and let me just take these two out so I can see this, right, and push this there. As you can see, it does just that. And what we can do also is to hard power this with a repeater, like that, and even add a little bit of delay. So it's a bit of a delay there. So now, push it, and it doesn't turn on right away, it just have a smidge away afterwards. And that will actually give us a little longer pulse. So if we want to do that, we could do that. Just take our train, put it in, and we hop in, push the button, and there we go. As you can see, it stays on a little bit longer after we've gone, whereas previously it didn't. So it depends on what you want to do. This I probably say is a little safer, but uh, if you want to use a little bit less redstone, you can do just that. All you have to do is just Take this out, like so, and just put this one block in. You could keep the repeater if you like, then it just goes a little bit more delayed, so 
now it's going to do like this. So it's not going to go right away. So you have a little bit of time to react. And hop in. Push your button. There it goes. And you see, it, the moment we got off, it stopped. It basically it turned off, which is just enough. Now this works with the red button, uh, I mean the wooden button. Let's take a look about the stone button. The stone button, I believe, is shorter. So if I take that right there, right around there, yep. And now I put this in and hop in. Try the stone button. See, it's a little bit shorter, but just enough time for us to get off. See? So it's, it's actually a couple, about two ticks shorter than the wooden button. So I re recommend using your wooden button instead of the stone button. Uh, just to make sure you have enough time to get off your ramp. Right? So if I do this, I don't know if it's noticeable to most of you. See? Right up. See, what happened is, when I hit this point, that's when this turned off. Right, roughly around here or here. But with the stone button, it, it's turned off roughly around here, just as I was getting off. So it's a small difference, but it can make a difference depending on what situation you're in. If you want to use a higher ramp, if you, for instance, or whatever the case may be. So now what you can do is just add in your walls. So we can just go ahead and do just that. I'll build the, the walls here and I'll be right back. So I've got my walls up now. So you can see that all around here. Uh, I can add another wall here if I want to. And I'm just leaving that open just for demonstration purposes. And essentially, come in through here, and you can exit out at this point. And this, I mean, like, this is just a plain old blocky structure. I know I'm not getting too fancy or into aesthetics, but this allows us to go around and into the arrivals area over here. So it's where you have your arrivals. You come out this way, turn this way, and you could either exit out or you could go into the departures area completely up to you. Another thing we need to add in is our maintenance room. So we can add that around here or here, however, which way we want to do it. Um, I'll suggest we could put it, uh, I guess around here would be a good idea. But you want to make sure it's someplace where you can have plenty of room to get around. So putting it on this side would be a good idea. So we already have an item elevator over here you going to have to look at that anyways. So let's go put an iron door right here. So let's get ourselves the iron door. That goes in. And I'm going to put a button here just for simplicity's sake. I would strongly suggest instead of using the this button, use the keyed entry system that I mentioned in about two tutorials ago. So you want to check out uh, not the previous tutorial, but the tutorial before this one uh, in order to get a keyed entry uh, door that you can have as restricted access for people and then you have better control to get in this maintenance area. But for now I'm going to use this button for simplicity's simplicity sake. That allows me to get into here. Okay. Now from here I can, you know, open this up and I can get myself a ladder and put the ladder down like that. And that's going to go down into here. Now we're going to make sure we have a platform down here. So let's go ahead and get ourselves, uh, let's see, and some more blocks like this. And that should be good enough. Uh, let's make it one more down. Just we have some room to jump if we want to. So that way we don't bump our heads when we jump. And bring your ladders all the way down here okay this makes it a lot easier if you have two ladders you don't want to get down there because you don't have to try to fit yourself in a one by one hole it's just a lot easier then what we do is make a little room in here I'm just gonna do that and get right back to you so now I've got some walls up for this area and it's fairly arbitrary how I've put this in but another thing you want to do is also put make sure you got some ways to get underneath this area here so we're gonna break out a few blocks here and up to here or so, and bring in a few like so, like this. Like, go back up again, like that. So that way, we can go up and down here like so, right? So I'll, let's bring this out a little bit more and 
to go like that. We can also take some stairs like before and add the stairs in. Uh, let's try to put this a little bit further back. Like that so that we can get back up again, right? So that makes it a lot easier to go up and down here. Okay. Uh, over here we can just put some other stairs over here if we want. Like that. So that allows us to get up in this section here. We can just if we want to make the stairs all the way around. Completely up to you how you want to do that. Same goes at this section over here. We want to take these out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have four going in this direction and two across like that. Let's take a look here. We should actually have one more, so it's five. Then we can take our stairs, put those in like this, and then put our main platform in like so. I'm going to need these stairs too. And build that right across. So now we can get to the other side of the hoppers. Another thing you want to do is make sure you put, you know, stairs or ladders. You can put stairs here if you want, or ladders along the sides so you can get up and down very easily around here without having to worry about jumping. So it just makes things a lot, you know, just a little bit easier, generally speaking. Uh, if you want to put stairs all around, completely up to you how this part is completely, it's a partially practical and aesthetic at the same time. So up to you how you want to do that. And of course you want to do is make sure you have proper lighting. So get yourself a light source, either a torch, or sea lanterns or glowstone dust, whichever one you choose. Uh, I'm going to use torches in this case, just to light things up a bit. Uh, so you have one, two, one, two, three, like that. And just go around here, close to here, you know, roughly around here, and just put them at a certain distance apart, make it look nice at the same time, right? So that you have proper lighting inside of your structure. Once you're done, you should end up with something that looks like this. As you can see, we've got access to this entire area, all the redstone, etc. Right? And you can go around very easily and be able to access various different sections. Now, once you're done, you'll have to make sure that you put a hole right around here. So it's probably like one, two, three, four four out from here so you have this hopper that's here right so it's gonna go one two across from there or roughly around there it could be here too if we want to like right on here so we could put that if we like I'm gonna put this back but we can put it you know let's put it right around here because we have a torch here so let's take our ladders okay I'm gonna put another set of ladders right on here and when we come up here it opens up right into another machine room area. Perfect access for us. We want to take some more ladders and put them up here too. And make sure we have access to that too. And then we can come down here and make sure we have some ladders over here as well. Right? You can put one if you like. I'm just putting two just because I prefer it. It's a little easier to get up the ladder that way. Right? And then now you have access to all that. Now another thing you want to do is put a couple of ladders up this way as well some ladders here and if you hold shift now you have access to this now what we do is uh, let's take uh, our other block here we're gonna go up the ladder and using this block we're gonna hold shift and then create a little platform like so okay now we can also put a little thing like this we can go off to the side like that and now we can get up here and stay up here and I would also suggest putting a couple of blocks here so you have access to this. You can also now jump up on here and then be able to walk along here if you need to. If you want to get access to these particular hoppers around here, particularly these item sorters here, so what you want to do is create a little thing like this, put a block between this and another block up here. We're going to take another block, put that here. And now what we can do is put form up a couple of blocks like that, put some ladders up like this, and now you have access to that so you can safely go up and down.
Uh, looks like we have one, one little extra block, so we can take that block out. We don't really need that. I think that was more like a marker, so we keep rid of that one there. So now we have a way of getting all around. And now let's, let's just go this way. And go down. As you can see here, we also have this pipeline over here. So we can do one of two things. We can either do like we did last time over there, or we can create a little pathway over on this side. If we want to get up from here. It's completely arbitrary. As you see, you can do this however you like, as long as to make sure, well, the idea is to make sure that you have plenty of access to these areas. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a block and put that right there. Or, you know, I'm going to take that out, put that up here, right? And I can add another ladder here so I can jump and get up and over here. So now I can get up and along this, just like I was able to get up and along from, the other, from that side over there, okay? Now, if I want to, I can go ahead and put in another block here. And rather block can go out here. So that way, if I want to, I can put. I would not suggest block, you know, blocking that off, but instead put um, another ladder around, I guess, around here would be good. So you can jump up and then get on here. Put another block on there, ladder, and then that will go up like that. Now we can put another block here. And then you can get across. So this means right from here, you can jump up here, go like this, and then come down. And you can even get around too. Okay. Uh, to make it safer, what we do is add a couple of blocks like this. Uh, extend it out a bit. There we go. So that's a little bit safer that way. And you want to add some fences too. Let's get your fences. And get a fence here and here. Okay. You could also add fences along here as a guardrail just to make sure that when people are working inside this maintenance room that they don't end up falling off, right? So let's go ahead and add in our guardrail here. There. And that's good enough so you can't get through here, right? If they jump up, they can't, they can't get through. So this will act as a guardrail. That, that's for safety's sake. Now, let's say we want to go back up. Go back up here. We can go down this way. Or we can come up here. Go back to our other location here. Right? Now, if I get close to this cactus, I don't have to worry because this block is there. So it won't hurt us because this, this cactus, the cactus itself is a little bit in, you know, it's a, like a little bit of a fraction inwards, so you can't really touch it with the block on top. Again, the block is there to keep it from growing. Now you can add more guardrails if you want along the side here, so you can keep on adding more blocks around here. And once you have that done, you can add in your fences. Now you have your fences put in, let's go ahead and see here, over here, you want to add a fence gate rather than a fence. So let's get ahead of, get ourselves a fence gate that matches. And we're just going to stick that right there. So now you can get them down safely, right? Around here you can add more fences, I'm going to leave that up to you. How you want to do that. If you want to be careful and you're not interested in putting any fences, all you have to do is hold on the shift key and now if you hold all the way down to the edge, you know that you're not going to end up falling off. If you want to come back down, just go all the way right this here, back this way, and then come down over here, and then you can go over here. So you have a way to get back down and into every single machine room. You can also add trap doors to each one here, so you can just stick that on top like that by holding that down there. And that will make sure that you can go over your ladders in that particular case. So if I go here, you can come back up and down like that, right? And I suggest doing that for every any area here that you have ladders like that that are going into a hole. 
I can go around this area too. And up here. If I want to, I can take this out and actually just add this in. To allow me to go up and down these ladders and then close the door behind me with that. Again, you want to create, make sure you have another little machine room area in here. So we're going to close this off. So we're going to create a wall that is, let's see, about one away from there and about two away from your observers and your droppers on your item elevator. So let's go all the way like this so we have enough space. And then you can have this come out to here. Now, also, you want to have access to this area here. So you're going to leave a little bit of space here and then have a, ton, a bit of room that's going to go in like this. Okay. And then you have one, two out, roughly, and build your wall up to there. And this is going to go upward. From here, we can actually take these couple of blocks out so we can have access to this little area over here. We keep this here, and this also has to stay. So you're not going to have very much access to that chest unless we are going to break into this area here. So if I break into here, that's going to give me access to this chest here. So we can take out these blocks here. There we go. Now we have access to this area. I would strongly suggest actually putting a couple of blocks like so. And there's not, there doesn't seem to be anything on this. Let's take that out. It's just fine. There you go. And now you have access to that, and so you should be good to go. So now you can come in and you can check this chest if you want to. Uh, you can also even put a small hole here so you can check this item hopper as well. Just if you if you need to see, you know, okay, what's going on with this one. Additionally, you can add more on this side too. So again, going to get your ladders. Put that up here. So now you get access to this point as well. So it gives a little bit more range for us for how what more you can go to okay go here here uh we can actually put in another maybe another block around here but that would be a little bit too low but actually you know what let's do that put this in like this right uh like that because that already has access and now you have you know your ability to come up here and check out these hoppers as well for whatever reason and then we want to go back down, just go back down the ladder, come around here, and you still have access to this here. Also, you want to make sure you have a way to get out of here. So let's get ourselves a pressure plate. And uh, I'm going to take a stone pressure plate. Put that on the ground. And now it can just walk right out. If you're using the keyed entry mechanism, it's going to have a pressure plate as well. So this fits in just well. So remember, if you want to take a look at the keyed entry method, make sure you look back about two tutorials. Once you're done with your maintenance area, make sure that you're going to do the finishing touches. Put up the remaining walls, like so, and you should have a place for your train to leave, as well as one where your train comes in. Also, you got to make sure you put a roof on this thing, because it's kind of useless having it with just walls. You can see it doesn't look like much right now. That's because I have it really concentrated on aesthetics here, mostly just function. So if we were to come in from the inside, then you also have to see about putting in proper lighting. So get out your torches and light this place up. Eventually, you should have the entire place nicely lit up. This includes the departures area, main hallway, the arrivals area, as well as all of your machine rooms. Ensure that the lighting is close to the floor, as well as on any balcony that you may have. So now that we have our smart rail station done, let's go ahead and load up our train. We're going to put in our cargo, the 16 gold ore in our cargo carts here. Uh, you want, I could take 8 out of there, put 8 in here. So we have 8 in here and 8 in here, and then there's our lead cart which is going to contain our destination, which is going to be station 4, which is where we're going to, and we're coming from, and we're going to station 4 in region 3, okay? We're also going to have uh, our point of origin, which let's say was station 1 in region 1, okay? So let's go ahead and hop in, and then we're going to be on our merry way. We're going to have our minecart drained. We have a little red light here so that the person knows we're supposed to be stopped. And so we're just going to wait for that to give us green lights. And then we're going to get popped out. Then we just have to wait over here until we get our 16 gold ore back. 
So there we go, it started again. It took about 20 seconds or so for it to come back on this side. But if we look here, there's our 16 gold ore. So we can grab that and be on our merry way. Now from here we can go either one of two ways. We can go out into the outside there, or we can go back into the departures area. Now if we go here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get ourselves our minecarts. So we can get one, two, three, four minecarts. And we're gonna get three chests, so half of these. Here, so three chests. And then we're going to come over here, and we can either go like this, right, and make one minecart chest at a time, or we can use this new feature that we have in Minecraft that's been around for I think well, since 1.12, 1.11 around there. And uh, let's go ahead and look for uh, where we're going to have our minecarts with a chest in them. There we go. And just tap that once and then hold on shift. And we're going to actually get a couple of this here. Tap it again. There we go. So now we have three minecarts with chests in them and a regular minecart. So now we can go ahead and put our train together. So let's go ahead and go here. One, two, three, four carts. Once we have that done, and I'm in, I'm in uh, creative mode. That's why you still see the carts at the bottom chest, uh, bottom of my hotbar there. But now we're going to go and look for our region tickets and our city tickets. So we want to go to... Let's see here, uh, station 2, okay, and here's where it comes in where we need to be absolutely sure of where which region each station is in. So, I'm going to be station 2, region 2. So, I'm going to do that, I have to take the region 2 out of this chest here, so region 2, like that, and there we go, so we have state region 1 and region 2. So I'm going to go to region 2. So then I'm going to put that into my lead chest here. So uh, station 2, region 2. And into my carts here, I'm going to put my ore, my, my cargo. Okay. Then I'm going to come here, aim at the button. Now I have a torch here that's been not placed properly. I'm going to take that out of the way there. Okay. And take that out. So one up and now I can aim at my button here I am going to button there we go on my right way to my destination whichever that might be in this case station 2 region 2 so let's take a look here and I put station 2 region 2 look at that I've got station 4 region 3 here in my lead card and that's basically so that I can reload this station ticket back over at Station 2, Region 2, right? Back in Station 2's uh, stash of tickets. So we always get that coming back. So I can go ahead and bring these back. And of course, over here, we're going to have our Gold Ore, as well as a Station 4 ticket, and over here, a Region 3 ticket. So that's going to be another ticket that could possibly end up in the cargo trains, if the cargo trains are not filled up yet, so fill, uh, if they're not uh, f completely full. If they're completely full, the cargo carts will not pick up anything, and it'll end up just in the lead cart. So you don't really have to worry too much about that. Where these come from is right here. These hoppers over here, you can see Station 4, Region 3. And that's from those hoppers behind here that we had set up, those item stores behind here that we set up, so that when the pipe that goes underneath the items come underneath go up and over so as we mentioned before you have your items that would come from underneath uh from, as they're being drained from the ramp there they become up here and through this set of item hoppers and through these item sorters if they don't met, get meet the criteria here the ones that don't meet the criteria over there will continuing on will continue on and they'll go on over here where they'll come over to these two over here and this is where you have your station 4, region 1, which is the station we're at right now. So that'll get reloaded on the next train. Items that don't fit these criteria end up going down the pipe and back up this item elevator over here. That will then have the items go into this chest. And that's essentially your cargo that the 
Claire would need to pick up. Now because you have a lot of space here, if you want to make this a little bit easier for your users, you could actually put up signs and state, you know, that state which cities, like which city tickets would go with each region. So you can use item frames like I've done here with renamed item tags or with the item itself, for, for instance. Or you could just use playable signs, which is a lot cheaper. So you could actually just get the signs out and you could do something, you know, sort of like this. Put something up here that says province or region one. And then below that, you'll have station, so station one, right? And over here, you could have region region 2 actually you put an underline underneath it actually would make it look nicer like this 2 region 1 and then over here you put you know off to the side because make sure you have a lot of them and you put station 2 station 3 etc right and you'd have a, a whole bunch of them on this wall here and then over here you can have uh, station 4 but you don't have to worry about station 4 but let's, let's say you have a region 4 right region 4 Right, because we're already in region 3, so we don't need to put up stuff about region 3, right? So region 4, and then you'd put whatever you need to put about region 4, right? So that's basically like, you know, station whatever, right? So that's how you'd have it set up. And this would help your users to be able to load up your train as necessary if, you want, if they don't have this memorized. So that's it for today's tutorial. Hope you managed to find it informative and be able to use it in future builds. And remember this was a simplified version. Next time we'll be going into the very start of the advanced version of the Smart Rail Station. Do look forward to that. So remember to like, subscribe and hit that notifications button. This is a Minecraft verse everybody so try and spread this world. Let's try and get about, I don't know, 100 likes, 200 likes, see if you can get a few more likes on there, as well as the other videos that are there. Get your friends to subscribe to this channel because if they are into Minecraft, they're going to want to see this because this is something that you're not even going to get for people like Mumbo Jumbo, for instance. I've seen a lot of stuff from, you know, Exumavoid, Mumbo Jumbo, Tech, uh, uh, basically Tango Tech, but this is the very first time that you're going to see a true smart rail system in Minecraft. So I know it's long, guys, and it's not, it's not exactly very simple. But I'm trying to do my best to try and make this as simple as possible. If you do know somebody who is interested in having a fully automated railway system where their mine carts are completely autonomous, or someone who's just really into redstone, pass these videos along, have them like, subscribe, and hit the notifications button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Just make sure you keep them clean. This is Check the Effects signing off. I will see you in the next video. Peace.